this is a bookshelf from upstairs and I'm still in the process of fixing it. I want to turn this into a Welsh cupboard. So the top three shelves here, here, and here, I bought some beadboard for, and that's going to go behind it and it's going to get painted blue. And the paint is right there for it. And it's kind of blue between some of the blue and white dishes. And then down here is going to be cookbooks and I'm not sure what else. So, but right now, it's sitting right there. I am getting ready to sand. This is the bead board. I'll get it close so you can see. See, it has these little grooves in it. And it's going to get painted, but it needs to be just lightly sanded. Now, I had these cut at Lowe's. And this is cut to, because it won't fit in my car otherwise. I could not take the, the complete 4x8 four by sheet, four by eight sheet of plywood uh, or bead. I could not take the complete 4x8 sheet of beadboard home and cut it. I needed it cut there because I have a little car. Um, I have a Yaris, a Toyota Yaris, which is littler than a Corolla. So I had to have it cut before I left. So this is cut correctly. However, I just noticed, because this is the other portion of the sheet, and I knew when the guy cut it something didn't look right. He cut it wrong. The line should have been running straight up. The, the line should have been running the opposite of what they are. So thankfully this piece, which also has a good bit of damage to it, which I didn't realize. You can see it right there. Thankfully this is not a piece I'm going to be using except for a backing on a, another uh, bookshelf, but I'm not going to be using it in the dining room. Thank goodness, because that's really bad shape. So there is my electric sander. Well, it's actually Dave's electric sander. He's trusted me with it. And I have a socket right there. Now, before I get started, I got to show you something funny because we have a colony of feral cats in our neighborhood. They keep tackling my yard ornaments. I have two little ceramic bunnies. They've knocked them both over. And then over here, way back in here. I mean, they tackle this little guy. This is a little turtle that my mom gave me that used to sit up front here. They knocked him all the way back there. So I'll fix that while I'm here, but yeah, apparently they don't like my yard ornaments. Okay, here we go. I'm going to cut out the noise. So it's going to be silent. I'll put some music on or something because it'll hurt your ears otherwise. First coat. And each of these little teeny bead board spots I had to use a sponge brush with to get it down inside. So I used about three quarters of this jar and I do have a second one. Now Kills is usually a really good brand. I think I got this from Walmart for under $7 because it is a sample. Um, I think it's a half a pint. Does it say? It's 7.2 ounces. And I was able to cover this with a little bit to spare, but on a regular wall, it would be fine. But because this is raw lumber, I'm gonna need to put a second coat on it. So right now it's drying and it's going to match the blue china that is over there. It's gonna be behind those shelves. So yeah, we'll come back after the second coat is on. And just in case you didn't know, most people know this little trick, but if you don't, you can put, my dishwasher's running, you can put your roller and your brush in a plastic sack and put them in 
the refrigerator and it will keep them from drying out. Um, I mean, it's not going to last indefinitely, but it will it will hold it for a day or two. So, yeah, if you want to save your brushes a little bit, that's a little trick. Okay, we have the second coat on this. It did take two, and it might take a couple spots right now. You see that? I'm not sure. Um, might take a third coat in a couple places, but I think I will just wait until I have it up, and then I'll just do any touch-ups that would need to be done then. So my next project is I need to clear everything off of these shelves and there are screws like locking screws on the sides and the back and I need to um, use those and make sure everything's good and tightened up and then Dave is going to help me square things up. You can see my tape measure there. Um, he's going to help me square things up when I finish. And I do like the color this turned out. I think it is going to be a good mix between the blues because there is the blue of my falls graph. And you can see it's outlined with like a darker blue. And then that is salt glazed pottery from Williamsburg and that's a cobalt blue. And then that is a set of, it's a teapot creamer and sugar that my mother-in-law gave me. And that's kind of in a cobalt in a country blue. And then this is my dishes set, which is um, blue Danube, and that's got cobalt as well as a lighter blue. And then this is a plate that my mother-in-law gave me, which is also done in like a cobalt blue, as are those little decorative dishes. So I think it is going to work well with this color which is looking brighter it's actually closer to kind of a navy country blue sort of it's not quite as brilliant as what I'm seeing on screen so I'm going to take care of doing that now on to this this is what happens when Dave has a broken wrist and one of us has to hold the wood up while the other one drills this into place so we have it on top of a footstool, on top of a plastic container, on top of a box, perched on that. Entertainment abounds. This is going to be fun to see if we can do this without hurting ourselves. Dave's getting the drill while I hold this in place. And if it falls, it's going to hit all of my china, which is over here. So. I am the China's bodyguard at this point.
So here it is completed with the dishes in there. These are all the same that were in here before. However, this row down here is my great grandmother's bean pot, which is what my great what my grandmother said it was for. It's interesting. Let me show this to you. Okay, my grandmother was born in 1909, and this was her mother's. And I would have thought it would have been like for, I don't know, soup or some kind of casserole or something. But she said her mother always cooked beans in it, like baked beans. And here's the funny thing. She burned it one time. It's actually burned through the enamel. And these little specks are spots where it's actually gone through the, not the enamel, but the glazing. So you can see she burned it there. And she said she burned it on the cast iron stove where it was sitting. And you can see it on the bottom. Now this is Guernsey ware, which comes from Ohio. And then I asked her also, did this always go with it? Because here's the little like custard cups. They don't match this at all. But she said she always remembered them together. But I mean, the handles are totally different. This is much more simplistic. This has a basket weave, the feet on it. This one doesn't have feet. So yeah, it's totally different. But one of these, most of them are Guernsey wear, but one of these on the back says Weller. So I'm thinking, Look, and I looked at the, the trademark on the bottom of it for the Weller um, Pottery Company, which also was in Ohio. And come to find out that it dates to like, that trademark for Weller was 1904, so I'm thinking at some point she broke some of these and replaced them with the Weller in 1904, which would have been five years before my grandmother was born. And the interesting thing is they were living in Ohio around that time, I think. I know they moved out to Berthoud, Colorado at some point, but you could buy Guernsey Ware and Weller, not just in Ohio. Um, so anyway, yes, yeah, so that is there. And I have six of those little cups. There's the other one right up there. And then I was able to move my cookbooks down to the bottom so I can actually reach them. Not that I use them all that often, but if I do, there they are. Uh, the one that's the notebook all the way right there are recipe, like a recipe book that I've copied out recipes from different people and stuff. And there's an orange one right here that's a folder. I need to put it in a different folder. Um, but that one was from a former church that we went to and you know church cookbooks are always really really good so anyway this is the final product and i'm real happy with how my fake welsh cupboard turned out thanks for watching and if you've enjoyed this please give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing see you next time